Hey YouTube, it's Mal the Olympus Reptiles, and the last thing you saw us do, or recently saw us do anyway, was have Eric come down and install these cages from TGR. Uh, well, it's time to put some animals in. I've been saying for a long time one animal that really needs a new cage in my Venomous collection is Kali. So today we are going to set up the very first one of these cages and give it to Kali. Uh, I think she needs a new cage. She's bigger than one. The length on the other one is good. It's about actually probably a little longer than this, but the width has just kind of got her really compressed. I don't know if the heat system works as well for monitoring as it's going to in here. So I'm really excited to get her in here and get her into a, I think a proper cage, plus a cage I can work with one finger. What she's in now is never really designed to be a cage. We kind of retrofitted it. Ugh. Sorry if I'm moving a little slow. All this moving crap around has got my back all talking to me. Never injure your back. That would be my, my advice in life. Just don't do it. Avoid back injuries at all costs because, boy, they suck. So what we're going to do is put some coconut in here. Coconut is a great litter, even if you're looking at an animal that doesn't need a lot of humidity, which Kali does not. It's great for high humidity. It's great for low humidity. It's great for everything. Now, I'll be honest. I threw this whole bag in here because I honestly think it's going to take an entire bag to do it. I'll be impressed if it doesn't. We're just gonna put one in, go from there. My guess was about one full bag on any three foot cage and about two full bags on a six foot cage. And hey, look at that. That's about right. Maestro. Little piece of plastic in there, get rid of that. So there you are. Looks pretty good. And we're gonna leave it dry because like I say, she's a desert. She does very good uh, in the dry environment. She's native to high deserts of Oklahoma. Like when I say she's native, westerns can be found all over the place, but she's literally native to the high deserts of Oklahoma. Like that's literally where she came from. So this kind of dry environment will be just fine for her. It's actually pretty good. We're going to give her, that's not the one I made. Hold on, I'll be right back. Forgot the water dish. I did clean one for her. Here it is. Also, always be prepared for your videos. Uh, took her water dish out, gave it a good bath, cleaned it all up nice and neat. We are going to stick it strategically right here in the corner. You know, I'm gonna do it like that. It fits nice, okay? The other thing is I'll be able to easily fill it just by cracking it uh, and spraying the hose in if I want, making my life a little easier. You put it near the back, you're gonna have some more problems. This will cause more humidity to fog up on here when you first do a few things, but all in all, not too bad. This is going to start beeping. Don't worry about that. The reason it's beeping is because this door is open, letting all the heat escape into cooler room air to get in, and the thermostat is taking temperature from here. I'll hold up there to go off. So that's why you're going to have that beep. I'm not sure how to shut it off yet, so this is going to annoy all of us when we do this. I think you pushed the top right. Top right? Here? Hey, that did the job. Good thing Kurt read the instruction manual. Manual. Since we got more room, I'm also going to give her a little spot to try to crawl underneath something if she wants in there. Give her a nice deer antler to rub on in there. That'll just kind of help with some shed issues. And then I also had somewhere, yeah, there it is. You know what? Which deer antler you like better, Kurt? The one that's in there or this guy? This guy. This guy? Which one? Right or left? Right or left? Or left. Left? Do you want to go get your bow and shoot me really quick? So Kurt picked the left one, so we'll save this one for a no, different... I said R left. R left. Oh, okay. Kurt picked this one. I'll stick this one save for a different cage. We'll kind of toss that right in there. Get our skull over here. Stick that right in the middle somewhere. You know what, actually, there, this is more for me than her. Eh, what do you think, look good? Everybody likes it, we'll put a little water in there and then we're going to move the snake. Now, if she was in here, obviously I wouldn't be doing it this way. I'll show you what I do mean you can do though. So let's say we had a snake in there. 
I needed to add more water. Depending on where the snake is, I can stay my angles good, out of range, and I'm going to get water on everything. And just kind of making sure I don't have too much of a gap. Watching her, making sure I'm not going to get bit. This isn't always appropriate to do, but it is a way you can do it. Now, one thing too about these cages is when we talked to Eric, he assured us there's no leaks. So I know that I can spray a ton of water in here. So if I had a species that required more humidity, I can, like when I put the Gaboon Viper in, we'll be able to add a ton of water. We don't have to worry about it running out or making a mess or having any problems, which is also very, very nice. I am super excited about these cages. All right, guys, only one thing left to do, and that's put in a Kali. Okay, so as you can see, we just kind of went boom, quick for us, or quick for you, not so quick for us. But with as little drama as possible, we got Kali moved. There's always drama moving Kali. I mean, always. She is just never a very happy snake. Uh, she's always kind of angry. I'm hoping she doesn't streak up the glass. We'll see. <laughs> but you can see she's kind of taking the pose of a traditional Western. She's pissed. She's angry. She's standing up. Uh, we're going to give her a few days to settle in there. Probably will not feed her this week. She actually hasn't fed in a while. She kills everything but doesn't eat it lately, so we've kind of given her a few weeks off. Perfectly normal. You can see she's even blowing her jaw there. She's so angry on the lower end. But you can really see her color. It is awesome. So I cannot wait to see if that's genetic. And I'm very happy to have her in a cage that I feel is just, you know, it's befitting of her. It's a lot nicer size. Uh, one thing we could probably do is get some kind of like bigger corner hide and stick in there at some point in time. We may look at doing that and giving her kind of a rock shelf she can get underneath, which would be more natural than the log hide. But those are all things that can come. My, my main goal right now was to get her out of the cage she was in and a cage that I felt was more appropriate for her. Uh, she's also right here face height, which is going to be a little scary a lot of times because she does want to bite the shit out of me. But... I'm hoping, and this is probably a fool's hope, that the new cage will kind of calm her down a little bit and that maybe we won't have quite such an aggressive Kali to work with and she'll settle down a bit. Now, she's never going to be an easy rattlesnake. I have no idea or no thoughts about that. I'll be honest, she's got such a temper. I'm not even sure how well she's going to breed. Uh, my fear is when the male goes in there, she's just going to start popping the shit out of him. That's a legit fear. She may kill my male. And if she does, she does. I'll be just then happy to have the only one. And if she can't be bred, she can't be bred. But we're going to try, aren't we, girly? I actually think she's getting close to a shed cycle as well. There was one. Uh, and you can see she did streak up the glass or the polycarbonate. One thing, this is polycarbonate. I feel a lot better when she strikes this than when she strikes glass that was made. The glass in that cage was made to keep people from stealing small electronic devices. It wasn't really made to prevent a rattlesnake from biting me in the face. This polycarbonate is made to prevent a rattlesnake from biting me in the face. If you look here, you can see how thick of a sheet it is. This can take a big thumping without any worry. And of course, she's locked and secured in there. All right, Kurt, anything you want to add? Uh, what are the dimensions of that cage? Okay, so this cage is three foot wide. When I say this cage, I'm talking this particular cage. The whole cage is six feet this portion is three foot wide and it's 30 inches long. So it's three foot by two and a half foot. What she was in before was probably three and a half feet, but probably only about 12 inches wide. So she really had about three square feet before and she's probably about a three and a half foot snake, maybe four foot snake. Whereas here she's got, I mean, I have to do a lot of math and math is not my strong suit, but a lot more square footage, a lot bigger cage. It just looks nicer, you know, and, so the space is one thing, but just the look of it is another. But definitely has a lot more space. And before it was all length, not much width. And now she really has, it's almost a cube, six inches shy of that. So really kind of cool. Our other cages we have are three foot by 18 inches. And that's our original TGR cages over there. So these guys are even bigger than that by a significant amount. We're adding an entire another foot in length, which would be three more square feet of size. So it's not quite probably double, but probably pretty close. Uh, really kind of a cool thing. Anything else, Kurt? No. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. You got to see the first animal that went into our new TGR cages, TGR for all your caging and rack system needs. I don't think that's actually a slogan, but that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, <laughs> and of course, it happens to be my most angry rattlesnake that I own. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.